What's going on, Summoners? Welcome back to another episode of Pro Guide's Best Champs to Main, now on Patch 11.4. These champions are all about high performance, with low ban rates that are unlikely to get nerfed in the immediate future. The most reliable picks in the game that are the most worthy of investing your time into. So hit that sub button, and let's get straight into it. Starting things off in the top lane, we have Yorick. He seems to always be hovering between the high and low end of the A tier in terms of his performance, but is a fairly rare pick to see. As a result, it seems no one actually knows how to deal with him. His dueling is strong at almost all stages of the game, and his extreme split push playstyle means he will often take a tower or even multiple towers if the person matching you chooses to rotate to dragon when it spawns. Since solo queue teams often lack the coordination you need to make the clean rotations to prevent this, you'll find this happening a lot, especially in the lower elos. When playing Yorick, your weakest point in the game is the first few levels. At that point, you'll want to focus on last hitting, ideally with your Q. Once you have your ghoul summoned, you'll be able to naturally outshove your opponents, but they aren't just a tool for minion farming. Aim to harass your opponent by tagging them with your E so that your pets can fight your lane opponent for you, while you safely farm away unbothered. Once you hit level 6, you become a nearly undoable opponent for most melee top laners, thanks to the amount of pressure provided by Maiden of the Mist. As soon as you have it available, drop it, and keep shoving in waves. Thanks to her range attack, your opponent will be unable to even walk up to farm, much less look to trade on you. Once lane phase is over, stick to a side lane and pressure all game long. The only time you should even consider grouping is if the other team is 100% committing to Baron or Dragon Soul. Even then, you may be nearly useless in the fight, and it's probably better to just stick to knocking down structures for consistent results. As I said earlier, Yorick seems to always be a good pick, but since he's not particularly overbearing or popular, he never really gets nerfed. Our next pick is Kled. Like Yorick, when you're playing Kled, you'll have to respect your opponent for the first few levels, at least until you have all three spells unlocked. Unlike Yorick, with Kled, you'll be much more focused on impacting the rest of the map, often being the one to lead the charge into battle. Even with nerfs to all the healing in the game, it's still pretty prevalent. As a result, the free 60% Grievous that comes along with your Q gives you a huge edge in dueling. Your W gives you a huge boost to your trading ability, so make sure you're mainly trading when it's available. Also, here's a tip when it comes to Kled's W. When you first hit level 3, instead of leveling it right away, sit on the level up point instead. Once you land your Q on an opponent and can commit to the trade, then you put the point into W. This prevents you from wasting your first W on the minion wave, which is pretty helpful given it's a very long cooldown. Your E is great for sticking to targets, and can even follow targets over walls, but just remember, the first cast cannot pass over terrain, so it is not designed for escaping. Once you have your ultimate, you can of course use it to fight your lane opponent, but an often more useful strategy is to use the first cast bot lane. Lane ganking from behind your bot lane tower is almost always a guaranteed way to pick up kills on an overextended enemy bot lane, and potentially just secures a dragon and sizable lead for your team right off the bat. Only go for this when you have TP up though, so you can get back to your own lane. Once you're out of lane phase, you'll obviously want to be the one that leads the charge in fights. The movement speed pass from the ultimate is a massive enabler in those mid to late game team fights. And our last top laner is Singed. Like Yorick, Singed is one of those rare picks that many people struggle to deal with, whether you choose to proxy or just lane normally with him. If you ignore him, he just shoves waves in constantly thanks to his Q's constant damage, but if you attempt to jump on him, it means running into said Q and just being flung away anyways. As a melee champion, this pretty much always means a lost trade. As Singed, even if your opponent has a way to dash multiple times, your W's grounding effect and potential snare means that you can run around them with no fear of dying, as long as you play around your cooldowns well. That same W is also insanely strong when setting up ganks or trying to reach a high priority target in a team fight. No matter how mobile a champion is, if they're in your W, you'll be able to get on top of them and throw them towards your team and then hopefully net the kill. When it comes to laning, as I said before, you can play him either by proxying the wave or by laning like a normal top laner, but until you get used to him, start off just by laning normally. You have to actually understand the champion himself and why proxying works before you can just dive right into it and start farming between towers. Once you do master that strat though, you'll provide some insane pressure to the map for your team while tilting the enemy team off the rift as they try and chase you into their base just for you to execute in their faces. Out of laning phase, your job is to literally just be as annoying as possible. You'll start off fights by ulting and ghosting at the enemy backline, spreading your poison to as many champions as possible. Not only does this maximize your damage, but you'll also be applying Rylai slow and marking your enemies with Imperial Mandate. This gives you even more movement speed once your allies proc it, allowing you to be even more of a nuisance. Well, that brings us to today's question of the day. What champion do you think is always good, but never really broken? For me, it's got to be my main champion, Bard. His ultimate is so impactful, just giving your team a free Zonias, but it's never really broken because you can also equally troll them on accident if you're me half of the time. But let me know yours in the comments down below. Now let's get back into the video. 
Looking now at some junglers, we'll start off with Nunu. His high sustain, relatively quick clear, and foolproof ganks make him one of the junglers that will still be doing pretty well after the 11.4 jungle changes. Your Q gives you all of your single target damage against the larger jungle monsters, keeps you topped off through the entire clear, and lets you solo dragon as soon as it spawns. Also, when comboed with smite, it makes you pretty much uncontested when it comes down to smite fights with other junglers. W is what lets you actually get onto enemy champions when ganking and starting fights, while E is what lets you stick to them after you're in the fight. Ult serves as a massive zoning tool, forcing enemies to clear out the massive radius if they don't have ways to interrupt it. When it comes time to gank, lane ganks are entirely possible for Nunu, especially against immobile targets. But an even better strat is to use the speed shrine from Scuttlecrab. The movement speed boost can help you zoom into lane and kill overextended enemies with ease. Even if they try to flash away from your W, the combination of flash, blue smite, and your E means that you should almost always pick up at least one kill. And our second jungle pick is Ivern. This patch is supposed to be all about early game aggression in the jungle, but just because Ivern is an enchanter style jungler, that doesn't mean he's left out of that group. Sure, his 1v1 ability isn't the greatest, but Ivern is one of the better champs at fighting 2v2 and 3v3 skirmishes, as long as he's paired with the right teammates. He also has pretty high tempo as a ganker, since he doesn't have to actually fight camps, leaving him with lots of time to pressure lanes. His ganks, meanwhile, are pretty much fully reliant on hitting Q, and the best way to do that is to walk in from an angle on an overextended opponent. Once you do, cast E on yourself, allowing the shield to pop and slow the enemy, and then look for the easier to land Q. This works much better than looking for those max range Hail Mary Qs. While Azure the game is pretty strong, you'll feel even more in control of the game once you get out of lane phase. As a Moonstaff abuser, Ivern really shines in the full-on 5v5 teamfights around the Baron and Dragon. You just provide so much to your team. Between your Q locking down and allowing your allies to literally jump onto a target, your bushes adding a new layer of vision control, and all of the disruption from your E slows and daisy knockups, Ivern brings a huge bundle of utility to the table. The only real tip you need for Ivern is to avoid fighting 1v1s early game. You can actually win a fair number of 1v1s once you have Daisy, but even then, your main focus should be on playing around the team, getting them fed enough to carry, and then keeping them alive as they do so. And our last jungler is Gragas. After spending a lot of time in the lower tiers, Gragas has started to rise up a bit in recent times, and with the rise of early ganking junglers, he's now looking like a really solid pick. Each of his spells do AoE damage, meaning he has a great time clearing all camps, even those pesky raptors. Q gives you most of that camp clearing ability, so make sure that you're allowing the barrels to fully empower before popping them. The damage ramp up is huge. You can use the slow from it to help you with kiting camps too. To do so, roll out your Q onto the camp, stand between the monsters, use your E to stun them all right as Q is about to pop, then walk away from them as they're slowed. While clearing camps isn't a super complex thing, it doesn't hurt to be a bit more efficient when you can. Doing this takes a bit of extra effort, but it will keep you healthy enough to fight skirmishes when it comes time to. Your ultimate gives you massive teamfight ability due to its flexibility as a tool for engaging, disengaging, peeling, or just disrupting the enemy backline. When ganking this Gragas, your main tool is the E Flash. Not only is this good for extending the range on the ability, but it also allows you to hit opponents in minion waves, which they may think will protect them. If you have your ult, you'll want to buffer it so it immediately casts after your E, knocking your target into your teammates for a free kill. Before moving on, I just want to say we got a really big deal going on right now at ProGuides.com for ProGuides subscriptions. From now until the 20th, you can use discount code RANKUP2021 for 20% off of your subscription. Head on over to ProGuides.com, sign up, try it out, let me know what you think. Now back into the video. Now focusing on some mid laners, we'll start off with Galio. Already a strong pick in the pre-11.4 meta, Galio is even better now, with the early game being more skirmish focused. His ability to chain CC opponents and deal a pretty big burst of damage, all with relatively easy to land abilities, make him a great champ for those early game mid-jungle 2v2 fights. His passive and Q give a ton of AoE damage on a relatively low cooldown, giving him pushing power to match pretty much any foe. When dealing with melee or short range champs, you can force trades on them if they contest you on the wave. When you're dealing with the harder to reach control mages, your W's passive magic shield allows you to shrug off their damage, get priority, and roam to help your team. Or just take a free reset. Whether you're getting a gank from your jungler or you're looking to start off a fight, your E and W allow you to layer CC by yourself, something not many other carries have going for them. Once you're six, your ability to help your team just grows. Your ult can help follow up on the engage of a diver like Malphite or Hecarim, or be used to peel for your carries being dove by the enemy. And don't forget that it's a hard counter to champs like Fiddlesticks, Vladimir, and Karthus, since it gives all of your allies inside of it the massive shield from your W. Just be mindful of what you really need to use it for, since it has a super long cooldown. And one quick note on summoner choices. A lot of Galio players prefer teleport for the team play aspect, but we highly suggest you take Ignite. Not only does it help more in the early game skirmishes, but it gives you an extra proc of Nimbus Cloak to help you get onto targets. 
Our second mid pick isn't as focused on the pre-6 skirmishes as Galio, but he's still a really strong pick in the meta. Melzahar is basically the definition of unfun. If instead of flashy mechanical plays, you instead prefer to make sure your opponents aren't even able to play the game, he's the pick for you. With his W and E, he absolutely melts minion waves. Just make sure you don't let the dot from your E expire. If it's about to run out, use your Q to fully refresh the timer on it. Similar to other champs with super strong wave clear, don't expect to just be an insanely strong early laner as Malzahar. He goes out of mana super easy and doesn't actually get good lane control until you have lost chapter. But once you pick that up and you have your ult, you're the best mid laner a jungler could ask for. As we have said repeatedly, with the big shift to early game focused junglers, most of the picks in that role are going to be champs that are able to deal burst damage and layer CC. So when you pair a champ like Gragas, Lee Sin, or Jarvan with your Malzahar, all you have to do is press R, and the results will speak for themselves. Aside from your 2v2 strength, once it comes time to teamfight, you'll be a front to back fighter. It can be tempting to try and ult a carry, but you'll just have your shield knocked off and get CC'd to death. Between Leandri's, Demonic Embrace, and his ult's puddle, Malzahar actually does a ton of damage to high health targets, meaning it's perfectly fine to use R even on full health tank targets if you need to. And our last mid pick is Vladimir. While our previous two picks for mid have been ones that synergize well with the early game, aggressive junglers, and the newer meta, Vladimir is all about scaling up on your own and being a 1v9 warrior. While Vladimir top is pretty susceptible to being chased down and ganked due to the long lane, in mid lane he is much safer, with his W allowing him to easily make it back the short distance to his tower. In lane, just focus on last hitting and sustaining with your Q. You'll almost never want to fight for priority since Vlad doesn't have great finishing power for shoving in minion waves. While your E does give decent AoE damage, you have to be in the middle of the wave to hit all the minions, and doing that means that you're just going to take a ton of damage from your opponents. So stick with the plan of just last hitting and farming from the safety of your side of the map. In general, you want to ignore all early game skirmishes, and just wait until at least one item to start getting involved in those fights. If things are really going your way though, you'll be able to hold off on fights until you have your rank 2 ult at level 11, as well as your rabbit on death cap. At that point, you can teamfight anytime you have flash and ult available. When it's time to fight, you have two main goals. Land your ult on as many targets as possible, and one shot a squishy carry. Landing an ult on all five enemies means that even with grievous wounds on you, you'll pretty much heal back to full HP. To one shot a carry, it's also pretty simple. You'll want to look for a flank, or to camp an unwarded bush near where the fight is happening. Fully charge your E, flash onto your target, release E, drop ult on them, ignite, and Q. With two or more items, any carry without a defensive item is basically guaranteed to die to this. Moving on down to the bot lane, we'll start off with Caitlyn. She's been pretty middle of the pack lately, but the combination of her buffs and lane priority matters more than ever on 11.4 means that she's pretty solid now. One nice thing about Caitlyn is that you can pair her with just about any support. She scales well to teamfights with enchanters, but she can also bully lane really hard with mages, and she can even go for all lanes with engage supports, able to layer her traps onto their CC. For lane phase, you'll want to really, really abuse your incredibly long range by punishing your opponent every time that they move up to CS. I mean it, every time. Use your Q to shove the wave while also looking to poke your opponents. Once you have them under tower, place traps and keep poking them with autos. This constant pressure allows you to slowly chip away at them, forcing them back to base, and opening yourself up to take free plates. This playstyle can be extremely tilting to lane against and can pretty much win you the game alone sometimes. After you take the tower, look to rotate to other lanes and take those towers too. Not only will you be controlling the pace of the game as you knock down all the outer towers, opening the map for your team to establish vision and invade the enemy jungle, but you'll also be amassing a pretty sizable lead for yourself to carry fights. When it comes time to teamfight, you'll want to use your far range and traps to stay completely out of harm's way. While your E does give you some mobility, it's not as instant as other dashes or blinks, so you'll need to be a bit more calculated with how you play things out. Try to place traps around corners in bushes, or just use them to cut off entire pathways to keep yourself safe. And our second pick for bot lane is Misfortune. While the press attack crit build isn't quite as oppressive early game as the combination of Arcane Comet and Lethality was, she's still one of the best early laners out of the Marksman, and she's incredibly easy to pilot. Early on, harass opponents with your Q bounces and look to take very short trades, fighting for no longer than it takes to proc press the attack. Misfortune excels in these short, bursty trades due to all the damage she gets from her passive Love Tap. The trade off that is that she has low base damage and awful longer trades, at least in the early game. MF fares super well with aggressive supports, Leona in particular. Your E allows Leona to more easily engage on opponents thanks to you providing a slow, and once you're both level 6, the combination of your ult on top of Leona's full combo can pretty much erase any enemy bot laner. Out of lane phase, once you start picking up more items, your autos start to hit hard, able to let you turn the table on assassins and burst mages by just killing them in 3 or 4 auto attacks. When it comes time to teamfight, you'll want to be a bit patient with it. Wait until the enemy team has committed to a fight in a spot that's good for you. 
preferably in a tight choke point. Once your teammates have thrown out any CC that they have, layer your ult on top of it, and watch as the enemy health bars melt away. And our last marksman on the list is Ash. With no real hard counters in lane, tons of utility, and hyper carry levels of damage late game, Ash is pretty much always a safe, blind pickable AD carry. The high range of your auto attacks and W means that you can constantly harass your opposing laners, and thanks to your slow, they'll struggle to retaliate. The bullying only gets worse as more points in W means a lower cooldown and wider range, and eventually opponents that can't force a hard engage onto you are left poked out, sent back to base again and again. Your hawkshot allows you to get crucial info like where the enemy jungler is, which camp he has up, or if you shoot it into your own lane bushes, you can sniff out a lane gank. Once you have your ultimate, you have yet another bit of utility that other AD carries wish they had. While it can be tempting to shoot those highlight reel worthy cross map arrows to top lane, you should be focusing on the closer, more realistic targets for consistent results. While Ash is fine to fight 5v5 teamfights front to back with her insane DPS, you'll make the most out of her when you use your ult to make picks. Just group up with your team, pull the trigger pretty much every time you can, and with its relatively low cooldown, you shouldn't shy away from ulting any squishy target that oversteps their boundaries if you have teammates nearby that can follow you up. Now, finishing things off with support, we got my favorite champion in the game, Bard. His unorthodox playstyle can easily throw off and tilt your opponents, making him a great wildcard champ to climb with. His Q gives him strong trading in lane, and thanks to the stun, also makes it a great ability for roaming on overextended mid laners. All you have to do is walk or tunnel in behind them. Between their minion wave and the wall that they're likely trying to hug on their escape route, odds are you'll find a spot that you can stun them with your Q. Anytime you go for a roam like this, be sure to leave your W behind your own mid laner's tower. It's basically a free health potion and can give them the HP that they need to win lane. Your E's utility is completely unmatched. For one, it can serve as an escape tool, allowing you to survive otherwise impossible circumstances. Even when flashless, you can dip into the alcove and open a portal back towards the safety of your own tower. Other times, you may be caught out in the enemy jungle as you're trying to drop a ward, but thanks to your E, you can glide out to safety with no risk at all. But the most OP use is as a means of setting up your jungler to gank. Bard is the only champion in the game that can open up new angles for his jungler to gank from. Basically, he can just give everybody a Rek'Sai tunnel, meaning that no walls are safe. Once you have ult, you can make some game-winning plays if you use it well, but be careful, you can just as easily throw the game by using ults that save enemies, or worse, condemn your AD carry to their untimely demise. Up next, we have Nami. Of all the enchanters, Nami is possibly the best one at winning lane. All of her lane strength lies in W. The constant poke and sustain allow you to both pressure the enemy bot lane while keeping you and your AD carry topped off. Your E just adds more to this, allowing your auto attacks to pack a punch as well. Nami only really works well when you play her super aggressively, so keep up the aggressive trading with these two abilities. Using your Q is a bit more situational. Against other enchanters, only use Q aggressively when your AD carry is in range to follow up on the CC for more damage. Against engaged champions, never use it aggressively. The second you do, they can easily look to engage on you and then blow you up. You want to save it to disengage against these more volatile kill lane opponents. Nami's ult can be a bit awkward to use properly since it travels relatively slow, so don't just throw it out like an Azure Leona ult. Instead, you want to be a bit more mindful with the use. You can use it to layer CC onto an allies engage, or you can even hold it for a few seconds after a fight has started, waiting until the enemy team has fully committed to a fight for optimal disruption. And to end our list, we have Janna. Like Nami, Janna is an enchanter that can actually provide a pretty good amount of harass in lane, assuming you're willing to move up and be aggressive with her. It's mechanically pretty simple. All you'll be doing is running at your opponents to W them, smack them with two autos to proc your spell thieves, and shielding yourself from any damage in the process. After that, back off and wait until your spell thieves recharges all the stacks and begin again. Like Nami, when you're going for these aggressive trades, you'll want to refrain from wasting your Q. As long as your opponent knows it's up, you're basically invincible. While Nami has to rely on timing and aiming her Q pretty well to disengage foes, Janna's Q goes in a straight line, making it an extremely reliable way to cancel jumps and dashes from any champion trying to engage. Anytime you have to use your Q defensively, wait all the way back behind your minions until it's back up to try and go aggressive again. Once you have your ult, you have yet another disengage tool, but don't be one of those Janna players that taps R and runs away every time. More often than not, you can actually turn a fight on your opponents if you complete the channel of your ult to get the full heal onto your teammates. Finally, finally they put Bard on one of these lists. Really hope it doesn't mean he gets picked or banned against me in all my games now though. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to sub to the channel so you never miss out on our meta guides. Remember to let us know what champion you think is always good, but never really broken in the comments down below. And don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below. Can't wait to see you back in the next video, but until then, best of luck on the Rift. Stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next one.